Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to uh, this uh, combined business track um, where we have, uh, yeah, it was very humbly called Look into the Future. Um, we have sort of twisted it a bit to, um, to when to decide how to how exactly to look into the future. Um, but since we have until now very much told our story and our view on the on the world, uh, when planning this, uh, Michael, Paul, and I decided that we needed to have somebody from the outside give us a, kind of a, a, a view of their world. So uh, we have asked two of our partners to join us as panelists to so that they together with us can discuss how does the market look, uh, how is our technology viewed in the market, and how can we work uh, better together. So, um, Michael, would you introduce yeah. our guests? Of course, and then uh, I think we have uh, two great partners with us uh, today, which basically give us a give you all a, a pretty good uh, picture of who we who our typical partner is. So we have uh, uh, Henning. So now I'm going to be a little bit careful here, Henning. You you have to correct me because uh, your company name in English is sometimes a bit difficult. So it's very long of all. Um, I hope it's pronounced right. Otherwise, please correct me afterwards. Uh, but they are a Danish partner. Uh, they've been in the market for about, well, they've been a partner with us for about four years now. They're a full service company. Um, everything within the company is centered around e-commerce. Uh, they, they, their main focus is e-commerce and Magento. They're about 20 people, and um, and uh, they they actually sold plus 15 uh, solutions for us. That's paid license solution since uh, they started. So that's on one side, and then we have a different one, uh, Novicel, a little bit larger. They are um, over 280, and as Adam said to me, they were across 300 as well. But they a lot of people. They are in seven uh, European countries. Um, so Adam, which is the CTO, is here with us today. Uh, their focus is uh, towards uh, the digital market, to be the partner with the customers on the digital market. Uh, they have several products on their toolbox. And actually, they are one of the first partners we have within when, from, from the e-commerce. So they have been with us for quite some time. So thank you for participating with us today, both of you. I think that we can we can just uh, start it off uh, very slowly with, with asking you two guys, um, how do you see, where do you see e-commerce uh, going in the next, in the future from, or the next year? In the, I think we should limit it to a short-term future since uh, discussing what will happen in five years time probably doesn't make sense in this uh, in this business. So, um, Henning, will you share a few thoughts uh, with us on, on that? Yes, thank you. And uh, hi, everybody. And uh, hi, Anna, long time. Um, yes, of course, um, we have this uh, special situation right now in the market. So uh, for a few months ago, I had a clear vision on what's going to be next year. Uh, everybody has uh, planned a lot of things like uh, prim and so on, and uh, a lot of integration and optimization of the back, uh, the back stuff. But uh, due to uh, COVID-19, uh, I think everybody is in kind of a survival mode or, you know, what is happening uh, on the short term. So uh, looking into the future, one year or two year, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, quite a hard task, but uh, for, for our customer, I can see that there's a lot of uh, customers uh, going very fast into the B2C market. Uh, they really want to sell. Uh, lots of B2B uh, wants to go into the B2C market, uh, sell directly to the customer, especially design producers, fashion and so on. So that's some of the things we see. Many of them are forced uh, to go digital. So I see there's a lot of um, uh, our customers 
out there, uh, a, a new market or a, a bigger market, as I see it. Uh, they are also forced uh, to increase their budgets because they uh, have to lower their costs and optimize uh, their platforms. So uh, there's uh, a bigger market, as I see, and there's uh, bigger budgets, as I see it. Uh, if you look at and as the uh, on, on the, the bis uh, business wise, um, uh, technical wise, I think maybe Adam is uh, more uh, a guy who can answer on that that part. But business wise, I see uh, uh, I haven't seen that large number of. Uh, uh, enterprise solutions uh, coming in uh, for ourselves. Uh, we have over the last uh, four months had uh, uh, six or seven enterprise solutions. That's uh, that's something we get the two uh, two uh, two a year. So uh, for us as a, a small company, so uh, in, in 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 four months we have uh, seven. So that's a lot. And we double up on uh, on developers, so that's that's, and uh, I think that we can double up again <laughs> if you talk to me uh, in a in a half a year, because there's a lot of there's the market is growing very very rapidly and uh, the budget are uh, twice as big as it was uh, a half years ago. So yeah, yeah. And that's now I'm. In, uh, in the last session, I had a talk on, on, on the challenges for, for, for you partners. And, um, and that's one of the things I, did, I didn't mention, because actually that's something I hear from, um, from, from more of our partners is it's not only a question of getting the orders, it's also a question of getting the, the, all the developers that you need. So yeah. we might work together in the future also to make sure that there's actually enough skilled people out there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sorry for interrupting. Adam. Let's let's uh, let's hear your view on the on the future. A side note on on the developer stuff is that uh, we've uh, long been waiting for this uh, exponential growth in uh, <laughs> in uh, required number of developers, and and I, I think we're seeing it now very heavily, all of us, because in the entire industry, uh, as long as you can code something, there is something to do for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only commerce; it's basically anything digital. Um, but otherwise, from, from, um, if we start from the end user perspective, uh, the people actually buying stuff and checking out, I would, I would say that um, it's evolving more into a contextual purchasing um, experience for a lot of end users, for you, me, everyone buying. So that means um, just uh, building a nice uh, commerce solution on site or in store is, is not necessarily enough. Uh, you also want more um, uh, more contextual purchasing like on, on Facebook, if that's where, where your audience is or wherever they are, um, in store, on social media, on wherever. That's one thing. And the other thing is that, that people are spoiled uh, because uh, it's so easy to, to buy stuff online these days. Um, and that means impatient. And that also means that, that we have a lot of focus on removing friction within the checkout flow. And that's something we see in, in no matter what industry it is. And even though uh, it's very complex uh, configurations of, of uh, B2B products or, or services, uh, people just want it to be uh, smooth and frictionless. And, and that's a pretty, pretty difficult thing, uh, especially if you have some platform legacy you need to change. Um, on another note, uh, you could say that the thing that's happening business-wise with multiple channels, uh, multiple customer journeys, multiple ways of handling your customers and your audiences means that for our clients, it's often uh, it's often a, a, a catch-up game on uh, their uh, adaptability and responsiveness to change. So if, if they see uh, an opportunity in the market and that being trying to sell directly if they were B2B but now are B2C, their ability to move fast. Uh, so when when the virus hit, we had uh, customers that that said um, that e-commerce thing we're supposed to do that we're supposed to do in 22, we need to do it in three weeks. Um, so that has that has put some presented us with a bit of challenge in, in some some cases. 
Um, so I just think that the speeding up of uh, digitalization in general um, is is just something where, where you can say, where is it going to evolve to? Um, I don't think there is so much evolution during 21. It's more of a catch up game for a lot of organizations. Um, so yes, of course you can do AI assisted purchasing and one click checkouts physically and machine learning and shit and giggles. But what you really want to do in many cases is just catch up to where the modern consumer is, no matter mm -hmm. if it's uh, B2B or B2C or B2 whatever. Um, so it's more of a catch up game really, I think. Uh, Adam, uh, one, one related question. Uh, do you see any huge difference from market to market related to this? Yes, uh, the, the biggest difference is pretty much where Amazon is and isn't. Um, because uh, in, in the markets where, where they are, uh, the, the behavior is oftentimes uh, that if you're, in, if you're in a competitive market with your product, if it's a, a product you can buy somewhere else, uh, chances are that it's available on a marketplace. We see it in Denmark as well because we have uh, free shipping from Amazon.de, of course. Um, even so, even though Amazon isn't necessarily present uh, with a localized version of their store, they're just so freaking big that you, you can't really get around them. Um, so, at least for Europe and, and North America, there is there is a there is a big difference between uh, EU countries and US that has um, the Amazon <laughs> and the ones that doesn't. Because if you're in in a business where you have to to uh, sell on marketplaces, there is a much bigger focus on master data and processes and how data flows, how to consume orders, how to deliver, how to make sure that your uh, CEO is not uh, compromised by your vendors if, if you have your own store and, and you're selling on marketplaces and in other places. So, so it's not so much about what the store, what your own store can do. It's equally as important to focus on where are opportunities to sell and um, and how should you drive your traffic? Should, is it okay that you drive your traffic to the marketplace or to your partners or resellers or do you want to do it yourself? So so I would say the main difference is, is how many marketplaces are in there and, and how uh, how the, the default behavior is. So, so for instance, in, in the Nordics, the default behavior is that you find a brand or a store, or you go to Google and, and find some stuff and you buy it on that site. But if you go to uh, Spain or Germany or a, a bit more south or to the UK, your behavior is most likely that, that you go to a marketplace. You go to Zalando or you go to Amazon or whatever, and you start your purchasing process there. And that, and yeah, on that note, it's, 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 I think it's very interesting during the last couple of years, you've seen those businesses grow if you look at Zalando, they would never consider themselves as being a retailer, but more like an IT company. Yeah, so yeah. Their, their complete business model is to develop a superior platform, which of course is interesting for us who, who works with that. But how do you, if, if you look at your your clients, and this, this could be a good question for both Henning and, and Adam, is your client, are they reluctant to deliver to the marketplaces or do they see that as an attractive channel? Because that, I think that will, that will change the way that they buy uh, our solutions. I, I think that it, it, it depends. It always does because you can't generalize. Uh, let me try. <laughs> there, there, there are like two, uh, two, uh, two, two segments. That there are those that feel uh, threatened by it and there are those that see it as an opportunity. And um, those that feel threatened, uh, well, they, they're bound to jump on the ship uh, anywho at some point uh, because they won't be able to compete if, if they don't. Um, so considering um, a marketplace for what it is, is quite important and, and working with that, if, if that makes sense to you. If you sell a highly complex, uh, very configurable products, then it's not a place for you because you, you don't have the logic on a marketplace to, for instance, uh, configure a sofa with uh, 250,000 variants of, of legs and colors and pillows and, and stuff. Um, that's not built in there. It's gonna come at some point, but it's far away. Um, so, so something like that uh, would, would uh, LinkedIn is after me now, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> some, something, something like looking at, at what, what 
what you go to market with and what 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 is uh, your products uh, and how you sell them is quite important. So if, if it fits, it does. And the main thing is basically, um, do am I in a competition situation? Uh, someone else selling my product? So if I'm selling uh, the same iPhone as everyone else, uh, how how do I um, make myself more relevant? Uh, and and that's there's so many ways of doing that, right? <laughs> so. uh, that's right. That's right. Henning, you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think Adam uh, had the the point there. So. Uh, very good, uh, and uh, to see there's a there's a new generation and an, a kind of old generation in that uh, maybe it's a, just another way to say it, but the old generation is kind of uh, due to COVID nineteen here they they kind of wake up uh, faster than that it would have been maybe they will would have gone digital maybe uh, in two years time when uh, Amazon was coming so maybe this uh, situation. Maybe can prevent, uh, maybe can make us uh, sharper in the, the competition against like uh, places like Amazon, because if uh, the whole country is digital when they uh, come to the to the Danish market, then it's uh, it's harder to uh, for them, and uh, maybe we can uh, take the battle better. Yeah. So we can see is it cool shop or I can remember who uh, just wanted to invest a lot of millions to compete with Amazon and prepare the battle. So yeah, so there's a lot of, uh, yeah, yes, there's a big budget out there <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 that want to go into that battle. So, so, so that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, but so. that's the, the, the mark, the market dynamics really dictates that and also what, what niche you're in. So, um, so that, that's one thing. And, and then if you go to B2B, there are just a ton of companies uh, scrambling to, to stay relevant and, and to, to make a good interface for actually purchasing their product in a digital setting. Um, so yeah, um, huge demand. That's all yeah. I can say. That, that, that's, that's a question that's bringing to mind is that, um, you know, during this period where you say, as you say, Adam, initiatives that were planned to be in, in 2022 are now being la launched now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I remember just before joining uh, e-commerce, I, I, there was a, you know, in the news and the television, they talked to this guy who had, he, he made like three web shops a day uh, for different kinds of company, which made me think, what about the quality? How do you think, um, what about you, Henning? How do you see uh, the quality of those uh, quick solutions that just... Yeah, that, that's actually how we started uh, for 15 years ago. We, uh, we made a lot of uh, Dan Domain workshops and we throw them out of the window like hell. And we actually earned a lot of money because yeah. it, it took uh, us uh, five hours and uh, we earned, you know, uh, a lot of money on that. So that was fine back then. And as yeah. Adam said, uh, this is commodity today. So, so if you want to uh, be on top of the competition right now, because everybody is now going onto the same market, it's the internet, everybody is going digital. So right now there's maybe uh, 100 who wants to sell the same sofa, <laughs> mm -hmm. or 100 who wants to uh, sell the, 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 the iPhone. For 10 years ago, there was only a My 20 phone one of our customers who sold an a, a, a iPhone without uh, anything else. So uh, now there's thousands of them. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 and they have to be that, they have to be better than the other. They have to be faster than the other. They have to do better sale than the other. They have to do, have a better service, faster delivery. Uh, everything has to be automated. You know, it's a, if you really want to uh, be in the, the e-commerce market, then of course you'll need to find your place and find your customer and then be excellent in that, you know, in, in service. Yeah. Yeah. Delivery. That's, uh, that's actually one question again, uh, just to remind everyone that uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, do let us know. Um, within the, the tools of, uh, of Zoom. But there's one question and that relates to, I think what, 
what uh, what Henning said before, and also basically to both of you related to the train was coming, Amazon, uh, COVID nineteen. But I think to 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 understand the questions right, how do you do you see the the competition in the market has also increased uh, related to to uh, uh, to to after or so to speak, we're in the middle of COVID nineteen. Or how do you see that the market of competition? Do, do between the agencies or yeah yeah okay okay uh, between agencies I, I see those who were uh, kind of very technical like uh, Adam's company or maybe ours we are we are going to be more specialists uh, because we can't uh, we can't battle everywhere uh, maybe Adam he's one of a, one of a kind because there are a lot of people but in Denmark we do, we're not so many big agencies. So, uh, but what we see right now, as I see it from my perspective is that uh, the ones who have a, 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 a special focus, uh, yeah, gets a, gets a customer because it's easier to say, you know, I'm 100 dedicated to e-commerce or I'm 100% dedicated to SEO or I'm 100% dedicated to, to Amazon marketplace or whatever. Then, that's what people uh, go for. Uh, many of our customers, they pick, you know, uh, the specialists. Uh, mm. And uh, sometimes it's good to have everything in one place. Every, it, sometimes it's good not to have it. So it depends on, also on the customer. But uh, as I see it, uh, you more specialized you are, uh, the better it is in the market. And I think also that Adam can approve that. I agree completely. Um, but but uh, due to com competition, actually to come in and say that you just are a developer and you just can fix a website and you just can fix an e-commerce. That's not that kind of uh, developer that any of us wants to have. We want to have the specialists, the senior guys, because the solutions are going to be more and more complex. So uh, let's say you want to uh, build an enterprise e-commerce solution then you can't have any juniors on that on that team because you only need to have seniors on that team because it's very complex. Uh, if you have to do uh, price matrices and you have to do complex integration between the different platforms and it has to perform very well. And yeah, I can talk about that. For yeah, we, but, we, uh, you know, you, you need you need to have very competent and experienced developers. Are we and getting the same? We're thing? very glad that you are so focused on seniority. Uh, but as you can see in the pictures, this is the very senior sales team. So uh, whatever you have, you know, in, in my days, we used to say, if you cannot do it in Fortran, it's not worth doing. So uh, <laughs> be my guest. Yeah. Paul, uh, welcome to the show. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. you have, you any, uh, have you anything to add to the discussion? To, to, you're the most uh, experienced guy in, in our company. Apart from oh, and Warren. Oh, I wouldn't quite go that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking about aging. Uh, I was interested to hear about the uh, the specialist focus. Um, and I may have missed it just now while I was trying to get on, but um, I was interested in the cases where, where you see us as a good fit and where you don't see us as a good fit. Um, across the company, we see a lot of B2B, B2C, um, large, large um, projects, small ones, and it's, where do you see us as the really good niche fit? Start with Henning. Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat that again? Yeah, where, where do you see e-commerce as the really niche fit that fits, you know, as that nice, uh, the, the square bit going in the square hole or the square uh, slot? <laughs> oh, that's, that's, uh, that's a difficult question, I think, maybe. <laughs> Um, That's why we selected so uh, so <laughs> sharp panelists. There's a reason for it. Yes, yes. Um, Adam, can you answer? Yeah, yeah I can take this one. Okay. Um, so, where's e-commerce a good fit? I would say projects with with some degree of uh, custom processes, uh, where there is need a need to implement more flexibility than you would get out of uh, out of the box of, of some of the more. Um, Platforming as a service or, or more um, shell uh, ready made products. Um, we, we have this, this way of saying uh, if, if we describe what, 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 there are two types of clients that we encounter on, on what tech we select. 
there are those that come to us and say, we want newcomers or we want whatever. Um, but really it's about, do, do, are they willing to change their business so it fits the uh, certain platform or do, you, do they want to take the platform as a business enabler? Or you could say, is it business driven uh, technology uh, development or is it uh, technology driven business, business development? In any case, uh, newcomers is a good fit for where you have a little bit of both. So you need uh, a good place to store your products. Uh, you have uh, uh, maybe B2B and uh, customer specific prices. Uh, you may have um, uh, previously, uh, there were some performance issues, but they're no longer there. So, so the amount of products is no longer an issue. Um, so uh, also cases where we need to create um, a good experience uh, with uh, content. Of course, it says content and commerce. Uh, in your background uh, photos <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. And that is uh, something that, that's really, uh, especially good on the Umbraco platform when, when we put your commerce in there, in, in that play, um, but also on others. So I would say we have something where you've made a lot of decisions on, on what best practice is, uh, and we can configure a lot of what the, the client need, but still they have something that's special. So if they don't have anything special and they just want a site, uh, a standard e-commerce thing, uh, and they're um, B two C, uh, we would immediately point at Shopify because you're you're up and running in two days. For instance, um, if you want something that's that has more bells and whistles and a, a more of a uh, combined platform, uh, you would look at. Uh, maybe Magento um, for me, for, for a competitor to that. Um, but then when you start modifying Magento, you turn, it, it kind of turns into a beast. So you want to do that as service oriented instead. Um, so I, I would say this is always a question that we get a lot and um, it is always extremely difficult to answer without context. And context is of course a product, a project or a client or an actual need. Um, so, so it fits for a lot of different things, uh, but there are also other scenarios where other platforms are better or easier to work with. Um, yeah. I know it's a non-answer and it's fluffy, but it's, it's a start, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul, sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, I thought you were you meant e-commerce overall with fit. Uh, of course, e-commerce. Um, of course, uh, e-commerce. Uh, we try to uh, you know compare it uh, of, uh, on daily basis with other uh, platforms that we know, uh, Magento. Uh, and I see more uh, Shopify or Magento, uh, like you know they are. Uh, e-commerce is, you know, where you have everything in the box. And if your company, you know, needs these kind of functionalities and you can say, okay, we need that functionality. Okay, they have that. We need that. Okay, they have that. Uh, then, then there's a perfect fit there. But uh, sometimes you meet uh, businesses. They maybe sell uh, tickets. They maybe uh, sell a subscription. So they don't need all this kind of e-commerce uh, alike things and lots of uh, modules and so on. They just need the core and uh, keep it simple and high quality and with a good performance. Then you have really something there. Then you really hit the spot because Magento can compete there. Magento is a, it's a monster. You know, it's, it's, it's very big. It's like Amazon, <laughs> like, so we, you, you kind of, it's something else, and uh, every day we get this question: uh, Magento or e-commerce. So um, then also we see e-commerce is also very good for very very small things. Uh, you know where you only have a few products. Let's say you have a a, a brand that is only want to sell, let's like, say, one speaker or a few speakers and they really want to make uh, a big uh, uh, cool experience around that but uh, the flow the e-commerce e flow has to be very simple um it's like boo like they you know it's it's a very 
it's not very complex to to sell a amplifier. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's where like, it could fit very right. Where we have very high performance. If you need, let's say, uh, you want to have a high performing uh, a solution, then you need to have Magento Enterprise at least, and that's uh, maybe ten times, <laughs> or you you need to maybe at least uh, have a, a really, really well-drawn uh, Shopify solution. But then I will maybe consider e-commerce uh, on that part. Uh, B2B, we almost only do B2B on e-commerce, very complex solutions. Uh, one of the latest we built is like, you know, you can order a, a sofa, and uh, you can decide where and when, and uh, uh, you know, in a, a special time slot in Barcelona. So you want to have this delivered. So it's kind of a, a namely solution just for for sofas. <laughs> um, so that's that's the main thing. Then there's maybe if we should uh, go deeper into the technical part, then I think it's easier to customize the backend of a e-commerce than it is on a on some of the other kind of more box solutions, if you can say so. Especially that part, uh, if you just wanted to use a shell, let's say all your ERP system should do all the handling, everything, have all the logic, everything is handled by the ERP. That's not very often, but some only uses the e-commerce platform as a shell. Uh, then also that could be a good idea. Um, um, yeah, that's yeah. Well, I have one question, they... and perhaps Adam can can respond yeah. to this. Well, you're both free, uh, but the question is what the added value of e-commerce is if the web shop get all its data from an ERP or pen system. Well, it depends. It always does. <laughs> but, but you can say if, if you have all your products, all your data uh, from uh, PIM, and you just need something to uh, to consume an order, that's fine. But you still need categories. You still need search. You still need filters. You still need uh, all the stuff around CO and whatever. You would never uh, get that from your PIM or your ERP. Uh, also, campaigns, discounts, all that stuff profiles and logins for, for your audience, your customers, all that stuff would, would normally be something that lives and resides within the e-commerce engine um, because it just makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so where is the separation of concerns between uh, the PIM and the ERP? We have many, many examples where uh, orders are not managed in, uh, within the commerce uh, platform at all, where products are not managed within the, the commerce product at all, never, where that section is completely uh, closed down because uh, the, the, the client has nothing to do in their uh, products and orders and all of the important business processes are handled somewhere else. But you still need to build an attractive website. You still need to a nice front page. You still need campaigns. You still need something that handles your routing and your URLs and your SEO and all that stuff that's going on on the site. And you need a nice container for building um, all the interactions and the user experience uh, on the website. So that's where e-commerce comes in and makes that a nice experience for developers and also for the, the customers that are, that are going to spend time editing uh, all that nice content. But of course, if it's if you just need a backend for an app and everything is running on an app, could you use something else? Most definitely. Um, but the role of e-commerce and and the likes are usually to handle all the the processes around the the order and product. If you have a mature ERP and mature PIM, in some cases you would even enrich more. Um, product data after it comes from the PIM, but it, it depends on what your PIM can do. Some there, there might be some legacy PIMs out there. We've definitely seen a lot of them uh, where the product uh, text is maybe the only thing you can do. So you need to add images in another way or videos or specifications is all you get. You don't get the nice, nice text. So, so again, I'm being annoying because I'm going to say it depends. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
Uh, another point for choosing e-commerce is also that there is no transaction fee. And looking into some of these uh, larger software as a service platforms, we have a lot of uh, clients that, that are attracted to those. But as soon as they figure out they have to pay uh, two or just even one percent or a half percent of all their transactions to the, the commerce platform itself, uh, that alone uh, might pay for 10 implementations on e-commerce. Um, so it depends on, on the order volume and transaction volume as well. So there is a business side of it in there that's hiding somewhere where some of the platforms disqualifies themselves because of the nature of the business that is being implemented. So if you have a tons of small transactions of let's say 20 euros and you have to pay 2% of that and you have two, uh, uh, two or three million transactions of those a year, uh, then that amount adds up quite quickly. So you could build a hell of a rocket ship uh, on e-commerce for just the transaction uh, costs for a quarter. Um, so so that's, that's actually a thing as well, the running cost. You, you gave me a good, uh, bunch of good ideas there. Yeah, do them. Yeah. Look at that yep. transaction-based pricing. <laughs> Don't do it because it's a very good value proposition that it's not in there. Yep. Uh, if you do it, then 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 you should do um, um, a cloud-only uh, thingy uh, where you can start a small thing up and compete directly with uh, Shopify. But then I would say good luck. Mm. Yeah, how can I get there? <laughs> no, <laughs> and, uh, two thousand uh, engineers. Yeah, and before you do that, uh, just ask uh, Dan Domain. So uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> There are many of those, but, yes. but that's the thing as well. It is because it's uh, it's it's very very closely knit into the business model of, of many companies to have, for instance, small transactions. And if they do, it's a pain in a bad place. Uh, if if you have a two percent uh, uh, fee for every transaction on top of the um, the payment transaction fees, and it's um, I think it's a fairly interesting question, and it it it. Um... If we can just break for a small commercial, um, nor neither PIM or ERP systems are really fit for servicing a lot of requests. They are kind of back-end systems. So you will always, and I'm from the PIM world, uh, and we were always trying to cope with that problem and putting something between the PIM system and the, the presentation layer in order for to to be able to present a lot of data for the end customer and that's exactly what what our new version um, and the bolt uh, um, yes. the the bolt project is about that's all about making it possible to present a lot of data uh, for the website so um, look at that as a small commercial. I hope you agree, but I can see Henning is at least nodding a bit, so... Yeah, I'll nod as well. Yeah, so <laughs> once uh, Adam didn't use the depends word, so that's that's good, I guess. Um, one question, though, you... Uh, I, I don't think... I don't I don't know if you all were both uh, present from the, the beginning, but uh, we talked a little bit about where we were and where we are today. If you relate that to the product, and perhaps it's more into Adam's... Uh, technical view on the product. Um, how do you see the, the, the product as go to market ac according to the competition and, and our justification today? Um, and, and can you put a few words on that? Sure. Um, where you are today is a nice place compared to previously. <laughs> uh, because- uh, So far so good. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> It's a good evolution. Let's start there. Um, I've uh, from from pretty much from day one, from the the first time I met uh, Soren Spellingbone, he he um, I gave him a, a database of uh, our uh, biggest client at the time, uh, containing uh, three hundred thousand products, and I told him that uh, if that was faster than what we, if he could demo a faster backend for us than what we had. Uh, we would go with this product forever. Um, that's uh, 11 years ago, almost 10 years ago. Uh, I think it is 10 years ago. Yes. Um, and I think you are able to do it now. Um, <laughs> but, but that's because of the inner workings of e-commerce and, and how data is stored, how it's structured and how it is, it is indexed. Um, 
Now it's a lot more performant and you have a lot of focus on that. So that means uh, the platform can out of the box uh, tackle uh, a lot of uh, very um, complex uh, data very quickly, which it couldn't before. So that's a good thing. But the next thing is then how, how to ensure extensibility. And, and right now you have this issue of being on multiple platforms and you, you still have to, um, to integrate a lot of other services into the, the e-commerce solutions. We have to do that on all, all different uh, platforms. We do uh, WooCommerce, Shopify, e-commerce, Dynamic Web, Drupal Commerce, Magento, Sitecore, and a lot of custom stuff. So, so there's a lot of different things going on. But, but the issue with all of them is that you need to, that, that commerce is just a part of it. We've talked about European PIM, but you also have stuff like uh, newsletters, you have uh, maybe recommendation engines and all sorts of things that, that you want to implement on the site. But none of this is easy and all of it requires a developer. And we just agreed that developers are extremely hard to come by these days, um, especially the experienced ones. Um, so, so figuring out how to uh, make a stable platform that has good connections to some middleware, because WooCommerce, the organization of WooCommerce and the Python network and everyone will not be able to create enough standard uh, connections to standard tooling out there, even though we wanted to, um, because it's moving so extremely fast. So even the biggest platforms out there do not have connectors for everything. So figuring out how to do a good middleware thing um, for uh, the e-commerce box is good. It could be uh, something like uh, Azure's API gateway and it, there are a bunch of other candidates. So I think that's the next thing that's needed. It is to figure out how to do that uh, in, a, in an easy way, uh, handling all these crazy APIs and implementations that needs to go into the solution as well. And it's not a challenge that only you have, it's a challenge that everyone has because it's an uphill battle. Uh, you've maybe seen these uh, MarTech 5000, which is like all of the different marketing tools that are out there. Uh, and there are 3000 new services every week. So it's, it is impossible to keep up. So we need to figure out, or you need to figure out how to handle that pressure in, in an easy way. Um, and I think you're there now uh, with the core of the product because it's more stable. Um, it is uh, better performing and you now have a data model uh, in there that can actually handle more data, which is needed if you want to uh, pass more data through. Uh, it could be more segmentation stuff. Uh, if we look at uh, pretty much all of the, the CMSs that, that um, e-commerce can, can work with. Uh, there is some kind of segmentation engine built in or that is as a plugin that works really well. Now we've seen the, the nice one in, in the, the nice, nice Dutch edition to Umbraco, for instance, uh, new marketing suite and, and all these things that are popping up being more connected to the CMS. Um, but they're still making some of what the, the issue you, you have is that they, they tie it very tightly to the core of a CMS. So making sure that, that you can connect all these services in an easy fashion is the biggest challenge ahead, I think. But the platform is now stable and fast and it's good. So you just need to ramp up on, on the other things. Mm. It was a long rant. I hope it made just an inkling of sense. <laughs> but that, that's where I, I basically, that, that's what I think you should focus on and, and where, um, yeah, and, 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 and now we really, we are really going down, um, you know, the, 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 the route of CERN and, 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 and his team on the development of the product. But I think I do not reveal a big secret telling you that it's, of course, something that's very high and minor for us is the it gives us a great freedom to be tied into the CMS so we can present a solution you have for Marco e-commerce, it's, it's an a box and you can present that to a customer. Yeah. But on the other hand, as you, you quite right in, in, in assuming that we have a lot of work trying to keep up with the different versions of you of Marco. And then we also have Sidecore, then we also have Sidefinity. So that's 
that's of course something we we look upon every day all those resources what's the right way to 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 deal with that so i think that's spot on happen and it makes a great deal of sense yes mr speaker do you have another question i i do from from my side um what are you looking for from the the partnership with e-commerce and how's that best handled from your side or what do you best see about that? How can we support you? I'm just looking for a stable platform with a good best practice implementation that has all the bells and whistles. Period. Okay. Yes, uh, and from my side, it's uh, I'm more talking maybe uh, more from the business side, of course, uh, leads, qualified leads. Uh, that would be good, I think, but also maybe a couple, a, you know, working together, uh, agents between. Uh, maybe some need uh, has a, a developer that can help uh, new, new, uh, new uh, partners. Uh, we actually have done that a few times uh, where we actually help each other. Uh, we see us as, as friends. So uh, if you, uh, yeah, I think uh, working better together, uh, maybe connect, uh, you know, uh, the new with the old ones or the experienced ones and so on. Uh, maybe there's a business for all there. Mm. Um, It's, it's, that's definitely something that is uh, on our mind, is, uh, on our mind as well. With the, also with the new partner program, is how can we, how can we try to support the ecosystem in a way that 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 you can learn from each other, and how can we connect you better? So this partner summit would be a place where you know when we got to the beers and the pizzas that you would talk to each other and and, and exchange views on that, but but also by connecting different connecting maybe also the developers, not only the business people in, in, in different, com uh, different companies. It's of course something that, you know, we are extremely cautious not to promise too much because it can be really difficult for us to live on, but we are trying to work on with these concepts and these thoughts uh, yes. differently, yeah. Yeah, you can say in addition to this, uh, as we also I talked about it earlier, we uh, on paper we have a lot of partners in a lot of countries. I mean, the focus and the new partner program is also about to to have fewer and and find the right ones and be much closer to 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 your business, trying to understand your your business, your market. Uh, so uh, in, to, in order to be more successful going forward, and also related to what uh, what Adam said a little bit about before. I mean, our core is basically the, uh, the the integration to the free CMSs, and hopefully, uh, with time, we also hope that uh, the partners uh, see a, a possibility for them to build the bridges, for them to build the modules, for them to 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 deliver the add-ons and maintain those, and see this as a business opportunity. Of course, that comes later on, but ideally. Um, that is also a nice scenario for everyone because we basically just want to win. Yeah, yeah, and and sometimes we, if you were new, uh, when when we were new for many years ago, we had this uh, very big, uh, well-known Danish company who said, uh, "Can you do a e-commerce for us?" Of course we can. <laughs> <laughs> That's one hundred percent. And then I called you. How fast can I get a logo on your website? <laughs> and uh, then we uh, signed a, a deal uh, a week later. And then we had to go do integration to X and we had to do whatever. And we never had that, but we didn't know anything about e-commerce. And at that, that time, I really would have, uh, could, if I knew I could uh, call Adam and say, Adam, can I buy or rent a developer from you one month just to get a head start? And then, um, you know, then he can, uh, get us running on this so we don't have to use two, three, four, five hundred hours on, <laughs> yeah, starting up uh, because, you know, you can build it, you can make it today, your, uh, today you have your demo, but back then you didn't have, so mm. there was, you know. And but the, I, I hope that uh, you, 
you fully agree that we are in a different place now than we used to? I just say, but you know, back then I didn't know any partners. So this, these kind of you know networks where we are in uh, also maybe uh, you know can help the new ones to call uh, Adam or me or some of the others. You know, it's uh, I think uh, I would have done that back then. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, well, we'll, 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 we'll take we'll definitely take that back, I mean, um, because that's some because we see a lot of interest from new partners and especially not as much in. in for you, it's yeah, it can be good or bad, but there's no not as many in Denmark, but in in the other Nordic countries and in the Benelux, we see a lot of of tracks and our new partners. So it's definitely something that we could encourage people to do. Um, we have to talk a bit about uh, you know confidentiality and stuff like that. How we do do you with it? But uh, yeah, something. but but, but I think you don't see. Sorry. Oh, sorry, you go. We don't see any any of us as competition. Oh. I have never been directly in competition with Adam. Never. So not that, uh, not that I know what we do. No, no, no. So <laughs> so so why shouldn't I uh, call him and say, okay, now I need a Magento developer. I need yeah. a e-commerce developer. Can you help me out? It's just this one project. Can we find a deal on the the hours uh, the the hourly rate or something? And uh, I will make sure, I will be one hundred percent sure that Adam say. Uh, no, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> no, no, but, but of course, what it is. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, no. I, I just wanted to say that you 100% wanted to help me. And, um, yeah. yeah. I, I very much agree. We've, we've actually, actually done it uh, numerous times, uh, both with uh, customers that wanted to insource, uh, where we've trained entire teams. Uh, the largest one was uh, 15 people for half a year, uh, where we embedded five of our guys in, in their team. Um, but, but also these uh, smaller deliveries, um, I don't really personally believe that much in, in the package uh, stuff because uh, building a product and building a project are two very, very, very different things. Mm. Um, what I do believe in is that um, when, when we build uh, sites and implementations, we often do uh, some custom logic that is uh, quite crazy. Um, so being able to share that among other people or just let them know that, yes, we built a thing that can uh, spot weld underwater and make coffee. Um, so if you need that uh, sometime during the future, we have that lying around. So you could get a copy of that if you buy us some beers and give us a couple of hugs. Um, but that has worked very well uh, previously. So we've had a lot of contact with other agencies that said, oh, we saw you build that. We can see you build that thing for that client mm -hmm. or um, so on and so forth. Um, how, how about we get a copy of that? Uh, what would that cost? Um, because that way of just sharing half-baked uh, or uh, custom stuff that works for one client and give that to an, another partner that makes it work for, for another uh, client, that's fine as well. But going from there to a finished uh, package requires uh, that you spend a lot more time on testing. Um, so it's typically for us, it's too oh, difficult. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Now I'm going to sound like a, a, a very bad journalist in the, in the news, but we are running out of time. Uh, <laughs> I thank you. Thank you very much for participating, both of you uh, and, and, and all the and also, there's been quite a many uh, participants on this uh, on this uh, track. So thank you very much, and I hope you gained as much. I was very, very enlightened and uh, educated by you two guys. So uh, thank you very much for that. And um, let's let's meet in the future where we can discuss without any time limits. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We right. talk all night. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. <laughs> we'll make a special Zoom room for that. Yeah. <laughs>